Hey, 42 here. We all love video games. My generation grew up to witness its birth, and we enjoyed legendary classics such as Super Mario World, Zelda, Final Fantasy, Crash Bandicoot, and so many others. But beyond nostalgia trips of pixels and sprites, these games had a very special quality that modern games don't quite have. And it was quite simple really. You paid once and you owned the game. You waltzed into your local video game store, handed over a small wad of cash, and you received a cartridge with your new game on it. That was your property for life. Nintendo would never knock on your door and ask you to pay a fiver for a new coloured tie for your Donkey Kong, or a tenner to be able to play as Luigi instead of Mario. These things were just included in the base game by default. With over 2.3 billion gamers worldwide, the video game industry has grown into the world's largest entertainment industry, worth significantly more than film and music. In fact, with a forecasted revenue of $230 billion per year in the US by 2022, the video game industry is set to become the world's largest industry. Full stop. Perhaps bigger than food and oil. But during this period of tremendous growth, something unsettling has happened to the video game industry. The young generation today have unquestionably better games than my peers 20 odd years ago. The complexity of the worlds and interactions, impressive character AI, incredible depth of storytelling which often trumps most modern movies, breathtaking visuals and a competitive scene that is soon going to overtake traditional sports in viewership numbers. Us gamers should be thankful for the pieces of art crafted from pixels that we have to play with today, and the nostalgic games of the 80s and 90s are just that, nostalgia they belong in the past. But with this growing industry, an unsavoury trend has emerged that anyone who has purchased a video game in the past five years will have undoubtedly noticed. Every game release is full of upsells. Once you fork out 40 plus pounds to buy the game itself, you're then affronted with endless DLCs and in-game stores containing endless cosmetic items and sometimes, God forbid, pay to win items. But what may shock you is the complex casino psychology that large game companies routinely abuse to get you addicted to the games you play and addicted to spending money on them. These unscrupulous techniques are most obviously on display in free-to-play games, sometimes referred to as freemium games, because they're free to download and play, but you soon find out that you have to hand over cash to unlock most of the characters, use certain weapons or items, or progress past a certain point in the game. What may surprise you is that many of the companies that develop freemium games have been known to hire the world's best psychologists and neuroscientists to come up with ways to make their games more addictive and to trick children into spending more of their parents' money. One of the simplest ways game companies increase spending is by dissociating money from reality. Notice how games very rarely call their in-game currency pounds or dollars. They usually invent a name for it, such as gold, various gems, V-Bucks, influence, credit, orbs, shards, the list goes on and on. There is a powerful and very intentional psychological trick going on here. Repeated studies have found that the less we think of money as a tangible object, the more of it we recklessly spend. It has been proven that people are willing to spend up to 83% more when paying for items via a credit or debit card than cash. The less it feels like we are spending actual money that we could hold in our hands, then the less significance we place on handing it over. This is exactly why casinos use poker chips, and it's why games use virtual currencies. Another psychological trick the gaming companies have copied directly from the casino floor is something called a progress gate. This is a point where the fun stops, and you have to pay money to continue playing and continue having fun. Slot machines utilise what's known as a hard progress gate. You have to deposit more money into the machine to continue playing full stop, and unless you do, your game stops right there. Modern video games instead use what's called a soft progress gate. This means 
you will get to a certain point where you have to take a break for an hour or two before you can play again, or a particularly boring part of the game takes ages for you to complete, unless you hand over a bit of cash and you can complete it right away. Soft progress gates can be implemented into games in a myriad of different ways. For example, you may have to wait two hours for your virtual farm to grow more carrots before you can log on again to harvest them. But amazingly, if you pay just $3, they will grow instantly. Or it could be unlocking a new champion on that popular MOBA you like to play. You could technically play for hundreds of hours to unlock that champion for free, but if you pony up a tenner, you can unlock it right away. This is a soft progress gate. And soft progress gates tie in perfectly with another casino-like mechanic which seems like a frustrating staple in every game on the market right now. Loot boxes. If you don't know, a loot box is when you play for hours to unlock a box full of random rewards such as new costumes or items for your character but 99% of the time you can pay real money for virtual currency which you can then use to buy loot boxes instantly in any quantity you desire without having to dedicate hundreds of hours into grinding and button mashing zombies into oblivion to unlock just one loot box. The links between gambling and loot boxes are obvious, in fact it would be difficult to argue that loot boxes are not straight up gambling. After all, you aren't straight up paying for item X, Y or Z, you are paying for a random chance to get X, Y or Z, and most of the time you get worthless crap instead. The psychologists who work on these systems often add another layer of trickery in the form of entrapment. A well designed game monetization system won't present you with any soft progress gates or opportunities to purchase loot boxes until you've played the game for a few hours and you are entrapped within it, meaning you are already addicted to the gameplay. If you are presented with an in-game shop, the moment you load up a game that you've never played before you would naturally be put off. But if you have already enjoyed that game for several hours and you are well on your way to becoming addicted to the gameplay, then statistically you are significantly more likely to want to pony up some cash to progress further or unlock more loot. And when you do get hit with that first opportunity to pay to upgrade your experience, it will likely come wrapped up in another neat psychological trick, in the form of an offer or bundle. By bundling items together and offering a slight discount, players are likely to spend more than they otherwise would, if they were to buy the items individually. This is an age old sales trick, it's not unique to video games. Literally every online retail store offers bundles of some sort. When was the last time you purchased a TV online and it didn't try to upsell you a bundle that includes a fancy surge protected power bar, an overpriced gold plated HDMI cable and perhaps a sound bar that will blow your nipples off. The consumer probably didn't want any of those additional items in the first place but because they saved £20 by going for it all together in a bundle it seemed like a great deal at the time, despite the fact that they've now spent an extra £400 in addition to the television, which they otherwise wouldn't have. Loot boxes, bundles, special offers and sales that aren't actually sales are all pervasive throughout the gaming industry. It has gotten to the point where all modern video games mimic casino psychology. Players become addicted to the game and always want just one more go, just one more loot box. They suffer from the gambler's fallacy. Players falsely feel like by spending more they are increasing their odds of unlocking that specific golden item that they desire, but in reality their odds remain the same no matter how much they spend. And if they don't get that item after spending a large amount of money, they will often keep spending until they do. It's not the player's fault, this is exactly how modern games have been designed. But by far the worst offenders in the entire industry are mobile game publishers. The mobile gaming industry is currently worth around $150 billion. The mobile gaming crowd is a completely different demographic to your more serious PC and console gamers. Demographically, PC and console gamers are overwhelmingly male, whereas mobile gamers are mostly female. But what's important is that mobile gamers are far less likely or happy to pay outright for a game. 
Consumers are used to paying to download and play almost all AAA PC and console games up front, although that trend is starting to shift now as more free-to-play titles are beginning to emerge. In contrast, mobile gamers severely dislike paying up front for a game and the vast majority will never do so, even if they want to play it. As a result, the industry has had to adapt to turn a profit. In truth, the techniques that mobile game publishers employ aren't entirely their fault. They have been forced into adopting these revenue models to maintain a healthy business. In 2012, 80% of App Store games were free. Today, that has risen to over 90%. But the scariest figure is that a whopping 95% of revenue from all mobile games comes from in-app purchases alone. These so-called freemium mobile games use all the same casino-style psychology as their console counterparts, and often a sickening amount more of it. But the statistics about who is spending all the money may surprise you. Only 0.15% of mobile gamers are responsible for 50-70% of all revenues from in-app purchases. These few consumers who repeatedly spend hundreds or even thousands on in-app purchases are lovingly referred to by the industry as whales. Game developers prey on these whales to consistently milk them of their cash on a daily basis. Whales usually don't realise how much they're spending on pixels because their spending consists of microtransactions. In-app purchases are designed to be very low cost, usually only a few pounds or even pence. But when a whale is making lots of those transactions every day, over a period of months it can add up to thousands of pounds. It's really difficult for consumers to total up all of their in-app purchases and work out what they've actually spent. And people rarely do. Game companies rely on their spending going under the radar. All these shady tricks and techniques call into question the ethics of such business models especially when a large portion of the customers are under 18 years old. You could argue that if people want to waste their money on pixels, it's their own prerogative and their own problem. But it's difficult to use that reasoning when teenagers are using their parents' credit cards to spend hundreds on loot boxes and in-app purchases, sometimes without their parents even realising until it's too late. There was a recent story about an 11-year-old in the UK who racked up £6,000 on his dad's credit card over a few days of play because he was signed into his father's Apple account on his iPad. The child didn't even realise he was spending real money when he was buying in-game credits. And slowly, governments are beginning to cotton on to this issue. A recent report by a group of UK MPs called for loot boxes to be officially classified as gambling in the UK, which would make it illegal for under 18s to purchase them full stop. But for me, there's a greater issue at stake here. We can't allow the gaming industry and their products to be reduced to a bunch of push button slot machines with fancy graphics. Truly great video games are an art form that, when done with masterful deft and care, can invoke deep emotional responses that will stay with you for the rest of your life. My fondest memories in gaming are not opening endless loot boxes to hope for a new multicoloured hat. No. My most treasured memories were in games that were created by developers who you can tell genuinely care for the art form. I remember the first time I witnessed Link playing his Ocarina of Time, I remember stepping out of the cave in Skyrim to witness a breathtakingly beautiful fantasy world just begging to be explored. I remember listening to the local crackpot moaning about her frying pan in The Witcher 3 and genuinely laughing out loud. And of course, I remember beating the living shit out of my first hooker in Grand Theft Auto. Thanks for watching. But no matter what you like to do when you're gaming, you should be using NordVPN, who have kindly sponsored today's video. I know what you're thinking, didn't NordVPN recently get hacked? No, not quite. One of their servers in Finland was breached, exposing it for a very short time. There's a big difference between a hack and a breach. I've personally spoken to NordVPN regarding this and I truly believe that they are now hellbent on sharpening up their security to unprecedented levels to ensure that nothing similar ever happens again. So if you're considering a VPN solution, 
then there actually isn't a better time to choose NordVPN. Did you know that other gamers can gain a competitive advantage by launching DDoS attacks on your internet, slowing you down? But NordVPN will protect you from such an attack so you can game uninterrupted. NordVPN works on any device, Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it. I travel a lot and I often do sensitive work on my laptop, banking, messaging, private documents, etc. In coffee shops, hotel rooms and public spaces. But I always use NordVPN in these instances because it's easy for hackers to intercept your packets over public Wi-Fi and see everything you're doing online. NordVPN double encrypts your data so you can use any Wi-Fi connection, 4G or 5G, and know you're completely protected and your data is secure. Click my unique link in the video description to get 81% of a free year plan, four additional months, plus NordPass for free. Thanks for watching, subscribe for a new video every week, and a big thank you to the sponsor NordVPN. Don't forget to check them out using the link below.